What is the role of the International Court of Justice in preventing acts of genocide? This question has come into sharp focus following South Africa's unprecedented move to file a case against Israel at the ICJ, accusing it of genocidal acts against Palestinians in Gaza. South Africa, taking a stand as the first country to take such legal action, has presented a case steeped in controversy and contention. The crux of South Africa's argument rests on the devastation and displacement in Gaza, underpinned by evidence of alleged genocidal statements made by Israeli officials. Israel, on the other hand, staunchly refutes these accusations, arguing that their military actions are in accordance with international law and not acts of genocide. They've also questioned the ICJ's jurisdiction over the case, suggesting that South Africa is acting as an extension of Hamas's legal arm. This case, now in the provisional measure stage, presents a challenging task for the ICJ. The court must scrutinize the merits of South Africa's case and determine if the evidence presented is compelling enough to issue provisional measures. The ICJ's role is now to assess the strength of South Africa's case and decide whether provisional measures should be issued. The International Court of Justice has made its ruling. On January 26, 2024, the court issued provisional measures in the case of South Africa versus Israel. This case, as you may know, centers around allegations of genocide by Israel in the Gaza Strip. The court, in its ruling, took into account the ongoing military operations carried out by Israel in the region, resulting in a multitude of deaths, injuries and widespread destruction of infrastructure. The displacement of people and the humanitarian crisis faced by Palestinians were also key factors in the court's decision. The measures ordered by the court are comprehensive and far-reaching. They demand that Israel make efforts to prevent acts that could be classified as genocide under the United Nations Genocide Convention of 1948. This includes direct incitement of genocide in the Gaza Strip, but the court's orders don't stop there. Israel has been directed to take immediate and effective measures to ensure the provision of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance. This is to address the adverse living conditions that Palestinians face. Furthermore, Israel is required to preserve evidence related to these allegations and must submit a report on the measures taken within one month. Reactions to this ruling have varied greatly. South Africa has welcomed the decision, viewing it as a victory for justice. On the other hand, Israeli officials have criticized the court's ruling, expressing their disapproval and disagreement. So, what does all this mean? Well, the court's ruling doesn't address the core accusation of whether genocide actually occurred. Rather, it focuses on the urgent intervention requested by South Africa. It's an interim measure, a step towards ensuring the safety and well-being of the people in the Gaza Strip. The implications of this ruling are significant, but whether they will be adhered to remains uncertain. The International Court of Justice, while having the power to make these rulings, lacks a mechanism to enforce them. Only time will tell how this ruling will impact the situation in the Gaza Strip, and indeed, the wider geopolitical landscape. What impact does this ruling have, and how have nations reacted? The implications of the International Court of Justice's ruling are far-reaching. The ICJ's order of provisional measures is just the beginning, a precursor to a possible full-scale trial to determine if Israel committed genocide, but it's essential to remember that while the ICJ's rulings are legally binding, the court lacks an enforcement mechanism. This lack of power to enforce its rulings means that the court relies on the goodwill of nations to comply with its decisions. The question then becomes, will its rulings be obeyed or will they be completely ignored? This case has sparked reactions from nations worldwide. Israel, as expected, criticized the court's decision. Other countries, however, welcome the ruling as a victory for justice. One notable reaction comes from Iran, which strongly denounced Israel's hostile response to the ruling. Iran's foreign ministry spokesman, Nasser Kanani, expressed this sentiment in a statement, underscoring Iran's support for the ICJ's interim ruling and its commitment to the prevention of genocide in the Gaza Strip. South Africa, the initiator of the case, has been one of the most vocal critics of Israel's ongoing actions against Palestinians. They have led initiatives to hold Israel accountable for its actions in Gaza. The African nation, which has its own history with an apartheid regime, has been praised by activists as a global conscience and the voice of the oppressed. 
The plight of the Palestinians, particularly those in the Gaza Strip, has not gone unnoticed. The court noted that Palestinians appear to be a protected group under the Genocide Convention, highlighting the urgency and gravity of the situation. This landmark case and the ICJ's ruling have drawn global attention, sparking diverse reactions and raising crucial questions about the prevention of genocide and the enforcement of international law. To sum up, the case of South Africa v. Israel is a noteworthy development in international law. We've discussed the background of this case where South Africa accuses Israel of breaching the UN Genocide Convention. We've also delved into the International Court of Justice's interim ruling, ordering Israel to prevent acts of genocide and provide humanitarian assistance in the Gaza Strip. We have further touched on the reactions and potential implications of this ruling, including the strong denouncement from Iran. The world now watches as the events unfold, waiting to see how Israel will respond to the ICJ's orders and whether the court's ruling will bring about any change in the ongoing conflict in Gaza.